January 9. Esau Sells His Birthright As the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter. He was an outdoorsman, but Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. Isaac loved Esau because he enjoyed eating the wild game Esau brought home, but Rebekah loved Jacob. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness, exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied, but trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, First you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate the meal, then got up and left. He showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. Isaac deceives Abimelech. A severe famine now struck the land, as it happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants, just as I solemnly promised Abraham your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky, and I will give them all these lands." And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed all my requirements, commands, decrees, and instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men who lived there asked Isaac about his wife, Rebekah, he said, She is my sister. He was afraid to say, She is my wife. He thought, They will kill me to get her because she is so beautiful. But some time later, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out his window and saw Isaac caressing Rebekah. Immediately, Abimelech called for Isaac and exclaimed, She is obviously your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Because I was afraid someone would kill me to get her from me, Isaac replied. How could you do this to us? Abimelech exclaimed. One of my people might easily have taken your wife and slept with her, and you would have made us guilty of great sin. Then Abimelech issued a public proclamation. Anyone who touches this man or his wife will be put to death. Conflict over water rights When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants, that the Philistines became jealous of him. So the Philistines filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. These were the wells that had been dug by the servants of his father Abraham. Finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else, he said, for you have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away to the Gerar Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the Gerar Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then the shepherds from Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Essek, which means argument. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants, and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshipped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place, and his servants dug another well. 
a treaty with Abimelech. One day, King Abimelech came from Gerar with his advisor, Ahuzath, and also Pekel, his army commander. Why have you come here? Isaac asked. You obviously hate me since you kicked me off your land. They replied, We can plainly see that the Lord is with you, so we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. Let's make a covenant. Swear that you will not harm us, just as we have never troubled you. We have always treated you well, and we sent you away from us in peace. And now look how the Lord has blessed you. So Isaac prepared a covenant feast to celebrate the treaty, and they ate and drank together. Early the next morning, they each took a solemn oath not to interfere with each other. Then Isaac sent them home again, and they left him in peace. That very day, Isaac's servants came and told him about a new well they had dug. We've found water, they exclaimed. So Isaac named the well Sheba, which means oath. And to this day, the town that grew up there is called Beersheba, which means well of the oath. At the age of 40, Esau married two Hittite wives, Judith, the daughter of Berai, and Besmeth, the daughter of Elon. But Esau's wives made life miserable for Isaac and Rebekah. Jacob Steals Esau's Blessing One day when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau his older son and said, My son. Yes, father, Esau replied. I am an old man now, Isaac said, and I don't know when I may die. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows, and go out into the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. But Rebekah overheard what Isaac had said to his son Esau. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son Jacob, Listen, I overheard your father say to Esau, Bring me some wild game and prepare me a delicious meal. Then I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me. Do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies. But look... Jacob replied to Rebekah, My brother Esau is a hairy man, and my skin is smooth. What if my father touches me? He'll see that I'm trying to trick him, and then he'll curse me instead of blessing me. But his mother replied, Then let the curse fall on me, my son. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats for me. So Jacob went out and got the young goats for his mother. Rebekah took them and prepared a delicious meal, just the way Isaac liked it. Then she took Esau's favorite clothes, which were there in the house, and gave them to her younger son Jacob. She covered his arms and the smooth part of his neck with the skin of the young goats. Then she gave Jacob the delicious meal, including freshly baked bread. So Jacob took the food to his father. My father, he said. Yes, my son, Isaac answered. Who are you, Esau or Jacob? Jacob replied, It's Esau, your firstborn son. I've done as you told me. Here is the wild game. Now sit up and eat it, so you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord, your God, put it in my path, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer, so I can touch you and make sure that you really are Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father, and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's. Isaac said. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless Jacob. But are you really my son Esau? he asked. Yes, I am, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said, Now, my son, bring me the wild game. Let me eat it, and then I will give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food to his father, and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served him. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please, come a little closer and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced, and he blessed his son. He said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors, which the Lord has blessed. From the dew of heaven and the richness of the earth. May God always give you abundant harvests of grain and bountiful new wine.
May many nations become your servants, and may they bow down to you. May you be the master over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed, and all who bless you will be blessed. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. Esau prepared a delicious meal and brought it to his father. Then he said, Sit up, my father, and eat my wild game, so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac asked him, Who are you? Esau replied, It's your son, your firstborn son, Esau. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me wild game? I have already eaten it, and I blessed him just before you came, and yes, that blessing must stand. When Esau heard his father's words, he let out a loud and bitter cry, Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, Your brother was here, and he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. Esau exclaimed, No wonder his name is Jacob. For now he has cheated me twice. First he took my rights as the firstborn, and now he has stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give you, my son? Esau pleaded, But do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then Esau broke down and wept. Finally, his father Isaac said to him, You will live away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of the heaven above. You will live by your sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. Jacob flees to Paden Aram. From that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme, I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But Rebekah heard about Esau's plans, so she sent for Jacob and told him, Listen, Esau is consoling himself by plotting to kill you. So listen carefully, my son. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you have done to him, I will send for you to come back. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm sick and tired of these local Hittite women. I would rather die than see Jacob marry one of them. So Isaac called for Jacob, blessed him, and said, You must not marry any of these Canaanite women. Instead, go at once to Paden Aram to the house of your grandfather Bethuel and marry one of your uncle Laban's daughters. May God Almighty bless you and give you many children, and may your descendants multiply and become many nations. May God pass on to you and your descendants the blessings he promised to Abraham. May you own this land where you are now living as a foreigner, for God gave this land to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Paden Aram to stay with his uncle Laban, his mother's brother, the son of Bethuel the Aramean.